In my video titled CNC Axis Calibration, I showed you how to get your stepper motor drive current set correctly, get everything going in the right direction, and how to calibrate your axis travel distances. That's great, but are you really getting optimal performance out of your machine? I'm Doug Coughlin, and the goal of this video is to help you reduce your overall cutting time and make your machine run as smoothly as possible. Let's get started. Things that affect maximum speed include mechanical load, friction on your slides, gear ratio between motors and drives, available motor torque, machine alignment, resonance, and power supply voltage. This graph compares available torque to opposing forces. The green curve is a typical speed torque curve for a stepper motor. Notice that the highest torque occurs at low speeds and it drops off dramatically at higher speeds. Higher power supply voltages tend to move the curve to the right. The red curve is a simplified representation of the counter forces in the machine. These forces tend to increase at higher speeds. The motors will stall when operating in a region where the counter forces exceed the available torque. Max velocity, max acceleration, and max jerk are important performance parameters. They are set for each axis on the motor configuration pages. The default values are 5 meters per minute for max velocity, 10 kilometers per minute squared for max acceleration, and 50 kilometers per minute cubed for max jerk. You may have already adjusted max velocity, if so, that's fine. If the motor stalls with these default values, you'll have to reduce max velocity until the motor no longer stalls. We'll do final tuning on max velocity after we adjust jerk and acceleration. This clip shows my y-axis running with the default values. Notice the slow acceleration and deceleration. This sluggishness will greatly increase the overall cutting time for most jobs. As a starting point, I like to set the max acceleration to 35.3 kilometers per minute cube. This is 1G. At 1G, the axis will accelerate from 0 to 5 meters per minute in about 9 milliseconds if you ignore jerk. But you can't ignore jerk. As you can see in the next clip, it still takes about the same amount of time for the machine to accelerate. This is because the low jerk setting does not allow the acceleration to reach its full value. Obviously, we need to adjust max jerk. <laughs> few clips show various jerk settings. Watch how the various settings cause the water to rock. With jerk set to 1,000 kilometers per minute cubed, the water moves slightly, so I backed it off to 500. Notice that the acceleration and deceleration times are much shorter. The next few clips show my y-axis running at various speeds. The goal is to find the maximum speed that it can run without stalling. I'll start at 10 meters per minute.
Since I definitely don't want the motor to stall when running a job, I will reduce the max velocity to 80% of the value I've found through testing. 80% of 10 is 8, so I set the y-axis max velocity to 8 meters per minute. Repeat these steps for setting acceleration, jerk, and velocity for each axis. Overall cutting time can also be affected by the max deviation parameter on the settings general page. Max deviation specifies how far the controller is allowed to deviate from the programmed path. Deviating from the programmed path allows the controller to go around corners without coming to a complete stop. Lower values of max deviation result in more accurate cuts, while larger values reduce cutting time. Here are two cuts resulting from the same square wave program. The top cut limits the deviation to 0.1 millimeters and completes in 27 seconds. The bottom cut allows deviation of up to 1 millimeter and completes in 25 seconds. The default value is 0.1 millimeters and works for most applications. The last parameter that we'll discuss is this junction Excel field on the settings general page. Junction Excel sets the maximum allowable acceleration towards the center when traveling around an arc. The faster the machine travels around the arc, the higher the acceleration. The smaller the radius of the arc, the higher the acceleration. This parameter is necessary because max jerk settings for the motors can be violated when cutting arcs. This parameter limits the velocity around the arc such that the velocity squared divided by the radius is less than or equal to the junction Excel value. Here's a program that cuts a 20 turn helix with a 0.25 millimeter radius and junction acceleration set to 2 million. Watch the water rock due to excessive jerk. This excessive jerk can sometimes cause motors to stall. The cutting time for the helix is approximately 4 seconds. Here is the same program with Junction Excel set to 200,000. The water is not rocking. The cutting time is approximately 9 seconds. You should set Junction Excel based on your minimum arc radius and the cutting velocity. In most cases, the default value of 200,000 is acceptable. <laughs> In this video, I showed you how to maximize the performance of your machine using the Build Buttons controller while ensuring smooth, reliable operation. I showed you how jerk and acceleration can be adjusted to allow your machine to quickly and smoothly come up to maximum speed and decelerate back to a stop. I showed you how to choose the maximum path deviation that will provide you with a trade-off between cutting time and cutting accuracy that meets your needs. Finally, I showed you how to minimize your arc cutting time and avoid machine movements, possible stalls, and possible lost steps by adjusting the junction acceleration parameter. In future videos, I'll show you how to set up homing, set up probing, integrate variable frequency drives, and configure stall detect homing. If you want to be notified when these videos become available, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you found this video useful, please like and share it. Here are sources for more information. Thank you for watching.